So far, we've been talking about the idea of delegating tasks to agents without actually saying anything about how this should be done. And one key question is exactly how do we describe what it is we want an agent to do for us when we delegate a task? Uh, well, one kind of simple way to tell an agent what to do, how to delegate a task, is to simply give it a program. And the task of the agent is to execute that program. But a program is a very low level description of a task. And if you think about the way that we delegate tasks in the real world, uh, for example, when you ask your secretary to book a flight for you, you certainly don't give them a program that they, that they uh, execute. So what we're after is some way of delegating a task to an agent, describing what it is we want an agent to do without telling it how to do it. So describing a task that we want an agent to carry out without explicitly telling the agent exactly what it is to have to do in order to accomplish that task. And that is exactly the point about autonomy that we've been talking about in previous lectures. The agent figures out for itself how to accomplish this delegated task without us having to tell it. So this is the area of what we'll call task specifications. So the first idea that we have is we delegate a task to an agent intuitively by describing how good or bad specific environment states are. And the task of the agent is to bring about good, highly valued environment states. So formally, we do this through what are called utility functions. And utility here just means value. So a utility function gives us the value uh, of, uh, of something. And the first kind of utility function uh, that we're going to look at, these utility functions u, just take as input an environment state and give as output a real number. And the larger that number, the better the environment state is, as far as we are concerned. So intuitively, given such a utility function, the task of the agent is to bring about environment states that have the highest value. So this is a very simple and very high level way uh, of describing a task for an agent. And crucially, it doesn't tell the agent how it is to bring about those environment states. Well, uh, one difficult issue with these very simple kinds of utility functions is that what we're, we're assigning values to is environment states, that is to snapshots of uh, the environment. And if I give this particular environment state a particular value, it doesn't say anything about the value of environment states that come before or about environment states that come after. Um, so inherently, we're taking a very short-term view by assigning values to individual environment states. So how do you lift these values of environment states to values of overall runs? That is, if you know the values of individual environment states that occur in a run, how do you then compute the value of the run itself? So different settings might have some answers. For example, in some setting, maybe what you're interested in is the, the value of the, uh, uh, the smallest valued environment state that occurs on that run, or the largest, or the sum of the values uh, of all the environment states that occur, or maybe it's the average. Um, sometimes there will be simply no way of doing it at all. So inherently there is a difficulty with these kind of utility functions that what we're doing is we're assigning values to individual environment states, not to runs. Uh, so, a very natural thing to do then is to think about utility functions over runs. So the second type of utility function that we're going to look at is a utility function that takes as input a run and gives as output a real number. So now what we're doing is for every possible run, we're saying how much it would be worth to me if this run occurs or this run occurs or this run occurs. So we're inherently then taking a long-term view. Um, one generic problem with these utility function type approaches is that, to put it bluntly, people find it very difficult to think in, in terms of numbers. So when I delegate a task like buy me a, a flight to Toronto or arrange me a flight to Toronto with my secretary, I'm not specifying that task in terms of, of numbers and that's not how I formulate the task. So this is a generic difficulty with these kind of numeric approaches. Nevertheless, the approach works well in certain circumstances. So, for example, if you can give a precise numeric interpretation to utility, for example, if, if utility is simply the amount of money that's earned, okay, then the approach can work, can work very, very well. Okay, 
So we've seen two types of utility functions, utility functions over environment states, utility functions over runs. Let's now introduce a special case of utility functions over runs that are called predicate task specifications. So a predicate is just something that's true or false, and the idea of a predicate task specification psi is that it looks at a run and simply says whether that run is a bad one, gives it the value 0, or a good one, gives it the value 1. So these are special cases of utility functions over runs. It's just that the range of these utility functions is just the set 0, 1. Either a run is bad, 0, or good, 1. Okay, and we, can, we can naturally think of them uh, as being predicates when we value uh, falsity at 0 and truth at 1. So given one of these task specifications, what we want an agent to do is just generate runs that get the value 1. So we think about an agent winning if it's guaranteed to bring about runs uh, that have the value 1. So intuitively we can think about the agent as playing a game against its environment and it wins if it guarantees to only bring about runs that have the value 1 according to this predicate task specification psi. Uh, okay, and then finally, we can look at two special cases of predicate task specifications that are called achievement and maintenance tasks. So with achievement tasks, the idea is what we give our agent is a set of good states or goal states or target states. And what we're saying to it is, I don't care what you do, just behave in such a way that you guaranteed to produce one of these good or goal states. So that is, on every run that you could possibly generate, I want at least one of these good or goal states to occur. So intuitively you can think of the set of all possible environment states, and then we identify some subset of those, the good states, the goal states, the target states, and what you're saying to your agent when you give it one of these specifications of good states or goal states or target states is just behave in such a way that you end up in this set, that every run that you generate contains at least one good state or goal state. We're not concerned about distinguishing between these uh, good states. They're all equally good as far as we're concerned. We just want at least one of them to result. With a maintenance task, uh, on the other hand, what we do is we say, here are some bad states. I want you to avoid these. You can do whatever you like, but don't ever end up in one of these bad states. So you can think about maintenance tasks as being things like, you know, make sure that the reactor never melts down. So the states where the reactor melts down uh, are the bad states. We simply want our agent to avoid those bad states. So they're called maintenance tasks because we can think of them, the agent is maintaining some state of affairs. It's not maintenance as in fixing something. Okay, so we specify achievement tasks then by defining some set G of good or goal states. And these are the target states that we want our agent to aim at. So the agent succeeds if it's guaranteed to bring about one of these good or goal states. With a maintenance task, we specify a set of bad states. And we don't care what the agent does as long as it avoids those bad states. Okay, and then we're not going to go into it, but intuitively you can think about combinations of uh, achievements and maintenance tasks as well, and all sorts of fancier things. But the basic idea is that these are special cases of predicate task specifications. So in summary then, how do we tell an agent what to do? We've looked at, very briefly looked at, a number of different ways of doing that. Number one, utility functions over environment states. For every environment state you say how good it is by assigning it some numeric value. Difficulty with that is, how do you take a long-term view? So, number two, utility functions over runs. For every run, for every possible history, you say how good or how bad it is. Difficulty with that approach, where do the numbers come from? So, with a predicate task specification, you're not assigning an arbitrary number, it's either a bad run or a good run. And then with achievement tasks, you, you want the agent to end up generating one of these good states. With maintenance tasks, you simply want, to, uh, want it to avoid the bad states. So, how do you tell an agent what to do without telling it how to do it?